Good evening, Friendship United Methodist Church family, visitors and friends. Uh, God bless you on this day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us give God some praise. Amen. Come on, lift those hands up and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Lift him up, saints of God. Lift him up. He who woke you up this morning and he carried you through this day. He navigated you your route. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we just want to bless all of you for joining us today. Praise God. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come this evening first and foremost, O oh God, to say thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us through this day, and thank you, Lord, for bringing us home and preparing us for Bible study tonight, God. We thank you for watching over us all the day long. Father God, you are an awesome God. You are magnificent. You are great in your ways, oh God. Father God, we honor you. We, we, we lift you up. We praise you. We recognize who you are, God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God of life, health, and the strength. And you are the God of eternal life. Lord, we come again to say thank you. And, oh, God, we pray that you have your way with our Bible teaching tonight, God. I pray, Father God, someone will receive something from the teaching tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Saints of God, we just want to, again, uh, remind you of our uh, Bible, uh, pardon me, Sunday school. Uh, we have restarted our Sunday school at Friendship United Methodist Church. And our Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. Uh, you are welcome to join us especially the Friendship Church members. Uh, praise God, this Sunday will be the adults class. Uh, we ask all of you to join us at 9 a.m. Saints of God, we can learn so much uh, from, the, from the Sunday school. And we have some great teachers. So please, if you will, let us uh, come together on Sunday morning. Praise God, and I just want to thank all of you for joining us today. Saints of God, I want to invite you to Matthew chapter 1. Praise God. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. And just park right there for a moment. Uh, tonight, we want to lift up a passage of scripture and we will also observe a few other scriptures but tonight I come with a question what does Christmas mean to you what does Christmas mean to you uh, let's get personal what does Christmas mean to me praise God hallelujah you know, saints of God, that we are in Advent season, praise God, and we are blessed to have seen another Advent season, amen? Uh, the word Advent, we know what it means. It means the coming. It means coming. Now, if you, if you uh, down through the, the, the history of uh, the church, of Christianity, praise God, uh, Advent is one word, but Advent has, refers to, to coming. Uh, Jesus' first coming and his uh, second coming. So this is Advent. Praise God. He, he is already here. Praise God. And 
Saints of God, believers are waiting for the second advent when he returns to, to rapture the church and we go to be transitioned to our heavenly home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Advent for Western Christians starts the season for preparing for the coming of the Messiah. Amen. And the celebration of Jesus Christ. Uh, praise God. Uh, in the Catholic Church, um, a lot of people ask the question, well, we understand the word Christ. We understand Christ, but where did the myths come from? Christmas. Well, saints of God, here's a piece of information. Well, we know that um, Christmas is all about Christ. Christ. Christmas. Christmas. The myths comes from down through the years, the Catholic Church. Uh, when they celebrated Jesus' birth, uh, this was a mass service. It was a mass celebration. M-A-S-S. -S. So they went forward to combine the two, Christ Mass. Christ Mass. Or we could say uh, the Mass of Christ. M-A-S-S. -S. So the two words together means Christmas, 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 Christmas. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And saints of God, um, Advent, we all know, uh, comes four Sundays before Christmas. Amen. Praise God. And it lasts for, uh, it's four weeks. Advent can start on the, any day from November 27th uh, to December 3rd. Uh, you know, we light the Advent candles. Praise God. Uh, uh, most Christians do. Protestants, praise God. And say to God, I want you to ask yourself tonight, what does Christmas mean to me? If you were to ask a child, uh, what does Christmas mean to you, young man, young woman? Well, the first thing we would get, they would probably say, Christmas is a very special time for me. Why? Because I receive lots of gifts, cards, monies, and above all, Christmas, they receive toys. So that's their Christmas. This is what we call the material Christmas. Amen. And you know, saints of God, we all were once children. So we know the joy of a material Christmas. But saints of God, during the process, we ask that you be mindful uh, of the real reason of Christmas and teach your children the real reason of Christmas. Yes, it's okay to purchase gifts and give them monies and clothing. They look forward to this. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> you all know down through the years, we we were told there was a Santa Claus. Oh my God, we, we were good. All mom and dad had to say, now if you be good, Santa Claus is going to treat you good. What do we know that's not biblical? But however, um, I would bother that. I'll leave that alone. But saints of God, just teach your children the real reason behind Christmas. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to ask you, if you will, to turn with me to... Um, First, um, Matthew chapter 1. I think we all should be there. Praise God. Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading at the 18th verse. Now, saints of God, as we read this, I promise you, you will, you will, you will observe the true meaning of Christmas and what does Christmas mean to you. Amen. Praise God. Let us begin reading at the 18th verse. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 1, 
And we will begin reading at the 18th verse. Now hear what it says. Again, there's a lot in this passage. We have the reason for Christmas, uh, what it means to us, why Christ came is all here. Here it is. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, a righteous man. Now, Joseph was a righteous man. Look what he did. <laughs> and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Not of man, but of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, and she was, pardon me, and she will, excuse me, bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people. He will save humanity. He will save all of us from our sins. Now, this doesn't mean just because Jesus came our sins are automatically forgiven. No, 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 no. We're going to have to ask God for forgiveness and ask God to, to, to forgive our sins and then we will confess our sins and then we will ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives. In other words, we're going to have to plug into his reason for coming to earth. To save his people. His people. Sinful people. Aren't you glad you saved the day, saints of God? Aren't you glad that you are in the family of God? Oh, praise God. Verse 22. Let's go just a little further. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, uh, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means, which is translated, God with us. So see, saints of God, when you accept Christ, God is with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Now, saints, I want to look at a few more passages. If you will, let us turn to... to, to Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Yes. This is a very short passage. 2 Corinthians. And we're going to look at chapter 9. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And let's look at uh, the 15th verse. Saints of God, Jesus came to save the world. He came to save me. He came to save you. Amen. Look at verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that Jesus came to earth. Hear what it says, verse 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. <laughs> now, that's a Christmas gift. Praise God. Oh, God. Jesus came as a gift to the entire world. Oh, thank you, Father God. Saints of God, let us not forget the real meaning of Christmas. It's okay to give gifts. Yes, it's okay. But let us not get sidetracked. Turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 4. The Gospel of John, Chapter 4. Praise God. And 
we will look at verses 4 and 5. What I said, I'm sorry, the Gospel of John chapter 1, I may have said 4, not certain, chapter 1, there it is. And you know, Jesus brought light into a dark world. You know what darkness is? Darkness is associated with sin. All kinds of evil happens during darkness. Amen? The Gospel of John, chapter 1, and we'll look at verses, praise God, 4 and 5. Now hear this. Jesus brought light to a dark world. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Praise God. Listen, that, oh God, thank you, Jesus. The life was light of men. Jesus is the light of men. He is the light for men. Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness. Oh, glory. And the darkness did not comprehend it. In other words, the light is here. But saints of God, if you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, you're still in darkness. Unbelievers don't want to accept the light. Come on, let's be real. When we were unsaved, we didn't want to accept the light. Come on, can I be real? We ran from the light. Hallelujah, we ran from that light. But thank God for Jesus Christ. He brought light to a dark world. And saints of God, this is what Christmas means to us. We celebrate what he did some 2,000 years ago. Let's go to another passage. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. This is a very great passage also. Galatians chapter 4. And let's look at, praise God, verses 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Thank you, Jesus. Hear what it says. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Now, this is sons and daughters as well. And listen, saints of God, what he's, what he's saying is here, born under the law, that simply means we were born under the commandments, but no one can keep the commandments. Why? Because we were born with a sinful nature. No one can keep the law. We cannot be perfect when it comes to the law. So Jesus came in our, in our space. He came uh, to, 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 to represent sinners. Now, he wasn't a sinner, but he placed himself with us that we might be transitioned. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Saints of God, what does Christmas mean to you? Now, let's not be like a child. The Word of God tells us, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I reasoned like a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man or a woman, what I did, I put away childish things. See, right now, a child, Christmas to them is materialistic. Mm -hmm. We were there. Yes, we all were there. But saints of God, I come tonight to let you know that Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus. It's a celebration for what he did for us some 2,000 years ago. I'll tell you what we celebrate. Hear this. We celebrate.
celebrate his life. We celebrate his ministry. Now, I'm going to go deep in this. I'm going to give you a list of things that, he cel that we celebrate. We, we celebrate his life, his ministry on earth. We celebrate his death. We celebrate, first of all, let's go back, his crucifixion. Yes, we celebrate his crucifixion. Then we celebrate his death. And we celebrate his resurrection. And we also celebrate his ascension. And hear this. We celebrate him through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is with us today. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit comforts us. So saints of God, we celebrate all of the above. That's what Christmas means to us. Teach your sons and your daughters the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas is not about having parties, going out, drinking, getting drunk, getting in your automobile, having a tragic accident, taking someone's life or your life taken, that's not the celebration. Amen, saints of God. God wants us to celebrate his son. What he has done for us, what he is doing currently, and what he will do for us. Hallelujah. We also celebrate eternal life. Believers, when we leave this earth, guess what? There's a, there's a there's a, there's a mansion waiting on us. So we celebrate eternal life. There is so much to celebrate. So saints of God, remember this. It's not about evil. And, and I'll tell you what you do this Christmas. If you see someone engaging in sin or the flesh doing something that you know that is going to do harm to them or harm someone else, just tell them, be mindful, be careful of the reason we celebrate Christa, Christmas, pardon me. See, they need to hear from us because we are believers. We've been there, we've done that. Now we celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. I don't know what you say to God, but I thank God for what Jesus did for me. And remember this now, we were born in sin. We were born with a sinful nature. That's why we do stupid things. That's why we curse folks out. That's why we lie. This is the reason we, we put folks down. We belittle folks. We don't speak to folks. We hate folks. It's our sinful nature. We are designed to do these things. But thank God for Jesus. He came to change our life. He came to change our heart, our soul, our mind, our persona. He came to, to make us one with him. Oh, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, I pray that you will reread these scriptures and uh, share them with others and uh, teach your sons and your daughters, your grands, the real meaning of Christmas. I tell you what you do during this Advent season up leading up to Christmas. Tell someone you love them. Just say, neighbor, God loves you and I love you too. Come on, just practice that from now to eternity. But make sure you do it during this Advent season. Even those folks whom you know dislike you. Say, neighbor, I love you. God loves you too. Use the word love. Because Christ came because God loves us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, for God so loved sinners, for God so loved me, for God so loved you, that he sent his son Jesus to earth to save us, to transform us, to be like his son Jesus. See, saints of God, when you when you when you when you when you get saved, you 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 are in the body of Christ. Therefore, you 
you are subject to do the things of God in the body of Christ. Come on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen to what I just said, saints. When you give your life to Christ, you are in the body of Christ. Therefore, we, we must not defile the body of Christ. We must do the things of Christ. We are in his body. So we are the one God is going to look forward to, to rapturing at the end time. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to be teachers to those who don't know the truth. Those who are still walking in darkness. We all have family members still in darkness. But saints of God, I pray that this Advent season will be a blessing to you and your family. And please be careful. Be careful. Do the things of God. And don't forget, every morning, Put on the robe of righteousness. I promise you, you will never go wrong, saints. Get in front of that mirror and you put that, put that robe on. Come on, put it on. And check yourself out. Come on, put that robe on and say, God, now I'm ready for the day. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Because you got on the robe of salvation you got on the robe of righteousness. you got on the robe of Christ. Live up to it. Until next time, God bless you. And may the Lord keep you strong. God bless you.